Well, hi there. Uh, my name is uh, Sandeepan Bhardwaj, and my topic of presentation is Optomex Laser Engineered Net Shaping. Now, what is uh, Laser uh, Engineered Net Shaping? Now, uh, Laser Engineered Net Shaping is an additive manufacturing process uh, which is used for fabricating metal parts directly from a computer aided design solid model or a CAD solid model by using a metal powder injected onto a molten pool created by high focused uh, and a very strong laser beam. Now in contrast to the procedures that involve utilization of power beds, uh, for example selective laser melting, articles made with this innovation or lens can be considerably bigger and can move up to a few feet long. Now, this system is additionally identical to a few trademark methods uh, that have a, a moniker also known as uh, the direct metal deposition or laser union or NC which they all call as. Now how does it work or what is lens? Uh, lens uh, employs a very, you employ a powerful laser which is utilized to melt the metal powder supplied coaxially to the center of the laser shaft through a deposition head. A laser beam or the laser beam uh, normally goes through the focal point of the head and is centered to a little spot by one or more lenses. The XY table is moved in raster design to create every layer of the object. Now uh, as this slide explains that uh, we have a very powerful laser which uh, melts the metal powder uh, which is supplied coaxially and uh, is uh, uh, centered or uh, focused on a single point where it has to be deposited. Now we have a XY table which moves in a raster design uh, which helps us to form every layer of the object. Now this is a video which would explain uh, the process of uh, lens. Now as we can see uh, the metals, metal powders are this one and this is the laser and it's, depo it's getting deposited onto the uh, design which is which is need to be formed. Now this is the raster design which the XY table shows or moves with. And this is the deposition head which I uh, explained about earlier. Okay, now what is the principle or on what principle does the uh, lens work? Now we have a very high profile neodymium laser focused onto a metal substrate uh, which creates a molten puddle onto the substrate surface. Powder is then injected onto the molten puddle to increase the material volume. A printing motion system moves a platform horizontally and laterally as the beam traces the cross section of the part being produced. After formation of layer of the part, the machine powder delivery nozzle moves upwards prior to the building uh, next layer. Now uh, what is lens? Uh, the lens process can go from metal to metal oxide powder to metal parts in many cases without any secondary operations. Now it is very similar to the uh, selective laser centering but the metal powder here is applied um, only where uh, material is being added to the part at that moment. Now uh, what are the primary applications of lens? Uh, lens can be applied uh, to primarily three objectives that is to repair and overhaul uh, uh, a component or a part which has been uh, discarded or currently not in use. Now rapid prototyping or rapid manufacturing as we all said and limited run manufacturing for aerospace, defense and medical markets wherein we require a certain kind of a product at a certain uh, numbers to be produced. So that's why uh, we have uh, uh, lens technology. Now uh, microscopy studies show that the lens uh, parts are to be fully dense with no compositional degradation uh, which is very 
common in other additive manufacturing parts. Mechanical testing also reveals that uh, it has an outstanding fabrication and mechanical properties. Now, what is the process at which lens works? Uh, as I said, as the uh, uh, video described it earlier, that we have a high power laser which is used to melt metal powder supplied coagulate to the focus of the laser beam through a deposition head C. Now, I have this diagram which shows the deposition head here. As it is clearly visible, the material deposition head as C. We can see the deposition head here. The shroud gas inlet as in the F thing. This, these are the lens which focuses the laser beam which comes directly to the lens and helps it focusing onto a single uh, point. This, this is the mirror which reflects the laser beam. This is the neoprenum laser uh, which is used. Now we can see the carrier gas inlet and the powder uh, metal supply. This is the XY table which moves in the direction of uh, raster design. Now, this is the part to be formed. We can see that this arrow uh, describes the uh, movement of the uh, nozzle or the gas deposition head uh, which is in the Z direction. Now the laser beam typically travels through the center of the head and is focused to a small spot by one or more lenses. The XY table D is moved in a raster fashion to fabricate each layer of the object. Now this is the uh, video which shows us the uh, repair of a guide vein. We can see it. It is a titanium vein which is used. And now as we all know titanium is very difficult to uh, machine or uh, work with. So therefore titanium provides us uh, very tough times for machining. So therefore lens can be used to uh, repair titanium veins very easily. Uh, this is the process at which uh, we use uh, to repair hubs. Now the deposition can rates we can be achieved is 0.5 kg per hour for steels, titanium and alloys, nickel alloys. Now we can see that these are the uh, De uh, what do you say the deposited metal this one and these are the metal powders at high speed now the process uh, as I said we were discussing the process now a simple right angle mirror E is shown but fiber optics could also be used metal powders A are delivered and distributed around the circumference of the head by either gravity or by using an inert pressurized shroud gas inlet shroud gas inlet or it can be used by gravity as well now even in cases where it is not required for feeding an inert shroud gas is typically used to shield the melt pool from atmospheric oxygen for better control of properties and to promote layer to layer adhesion by providing better surface wetting now shroud gas also uh, helps us to protect against uh, metal oxidation which is a, a problem at high temperatures. So basically there are three functions of shroud gas, namely it provides better control of properties, it helps in promoting layer by layer surface wetting and, uh, and to avoid oxidation. Now this is the deposition head in a uh, very comprehensive manner which shows that uh, this is the focused laser beam these are the powder delivery nozzles you can see the metal powders here this is the laser beam now converging powder streams can be seen here and this is the deposition surface where the metals or the uh, thing uh, the metal powders are being deposited now I have a video to show uh, which uh, describes the lens energy.
This is the 850R series of lens, which has a process work envelope of 900 into 1500 into 900. So we have a real system which uses, uh, which is used to control guide systems. Now this, as I said earlier, a titanium wear, uh, vein edge repairing. Yeah. Now this is used for building uh, thin walled structures uh, with a gradient material for enhanced compatibility with stainless steel fitting. As we can see the layer which are being deposited here uh, at this part. So uh, the layers are being deposited on a spiral fashion so that uh, there is uniform distribution of metal powders throughout the surface. Now what are the materials which are being used for uh, 3D printing of the, with our lens technology? Now we have materials which include titanium, nickel based super alloys, stainless steel and tool steels. In other uh, processes of rapid prototyping or additive manufacturing, we cannot find uh, metal compatibility or uh, usage of metal oxides or ceramics in that case for uh, addition, uh, additive manufacturing, manufacturing. So in this case, we have uh, steels, we have uh, super alloys, we have tool steels, we have titanium alloys and a variety of uh, product uh, uh, including inconel, copper and aluminium etc. as the materials which are used in um, lens technology. I have a comprehensive table which uh, describes the uh, lens techno uh, the material used in lens technology. Now this table describes the uh, lens, uh, sorry, the materials used in the lens technology. We can see titanium, nickel and tool steel. Titanium is the most varied uh, uh, material which is used after stainless steel. You can see the various titanium alloys which are used and we can see uh, nickel as well with uh, stainless steel, aluminium, copper, cobalt, composites. Composites another uh, uh, material which is very tough for as in very difficult to machine. So we have that as well. So uh, using powders, uh, materials composition can be changed dynamically and continuously leading to objects um, with properties that might be mutually exclusive using uh, classical fabrication methods. Now uh, the object fabricated are very near net shape and are generally will require finished machine, machining as in they only require uh, finished machining and no other operations or uh, metal removal or metal adding operations. Uh, they have a very good grain, st uh, grain structure and have properties similar or even better than the intrinsic materials. Uh, it has fewer uh, material limitations uh, than laser centric and doesn't require secondary firing operations as some of those processes do. Uh, processes like lasers, uh, SLS and SLM and can also be used to repair parts as well as fabricate them. So what are the advantages? Uh, as I uh, said earlier, the advantages are superior metal properties. The lens property process is capable of reducing fully dense metal parts. Metal parts produced can also include embedded structures and superior metal properties and microstructure produced is also relatively good. Complex parts and it require it reduces the post processing requirements. This would, advantages would be limited materials. The process is currently narrowly focused to produce only metal parts. Uh, large physical unit size. The unit requires a relatively large area to house, as the unit volume itself, uh, the unit work envelope itself is 900 into 1500 into 900 uh, centimeters, not even mm. So therefore, it is a large uh, unit to house and it requires power consumption, high power consumption because of the laser which uh, is used. Laser it requires a very high voltage and voltage to be uh, functional. Now applications of uh, lens technology is used in the following area that is to build mold and die inserts. 
producing titanium parts in racing industry. Racing industry and a biological implant of the biomaterial industry requires high precision and high level of uh, accuracy to be found. Or a single mistake can uh, actually result in fatality. So therefore, uh, a loss of property, loss of life, anything. So uh, racing industry and biological implant so, or the biomaterial industry uh, requires high level of precision which is only offered by lens at a single go. So uh, fabricate titanium components for biological implants as I said earlier uh, produce functionally gradient structures. Now these are the references. Optomic is the parent company which uh, was uh, helpful or which was the uh, company which discovered uh, or uh, invented lens now it was formed in 1992 and since 1997 it has focused directly on the commercialization of uh, direct fabrication processes and lens was uh, developed in the uh, sandia national laboratory and i my reference has take has been inspired and taken from the uh, lens article of the Sandia National Laboratory and uh, various the diagrams and some of the photos which I had referred were taken from the uh, rapid prototyping principles and applications and the video credits goes to the Optomic uh, website which uh, shows the perfect applications of the uh, lens. Thank you.